See, the Holy Spirit is wealth. And the Holy Spirit is the wealth of God revealed on earth. So when we deal with the wealth of the Lord, the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal it to you. The Holy Spirit is wealthy. This is a side of him. So as you go further into friendship, he's going to reveal this side of him to you. See, the same way, see the church, the, the religious world, they think that the Holy Spirit, all he does is pray. They think all the Holy Spirit does is talk in tongues. They think all the Holy Spirit does is fast. Those are just dimensions of him. But the Holy Spirit don't fill you just for you to talk in tongues. The Holy Spirit fill you for you to fulfill con- kingdom assignments on earth. Because there's some things that the Lord wants to do and he's going to use your body to do it. He's going to use the finances that he placed in your hands to accomplish it. So the Holy Spirit don't just fill you to pray in tongues. But we hear all the time that the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit is that you pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit is the most wealthiest spirit on earth. The most wealthiest spirit on earth. So when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, You're going to become exceedingly wealthy if you stick with his words. When the Holy Spirit speaking to you, as long as you keep on listening to what he says, it's going to bring forth wealth in your life. It's impossible for you to listen to the Holy Spirit and not become wealthy. The Holy Spirit of the Lord has a part of him called wealth that he reveals to you piece by piece, season by season, time by time. And the more you say yes to him, the more that wealth power start unraveling stronger and stronger and stronger. What happens when you go further in the wealth power of God? You start seeing visibility. You start seeing favor, meaning that there's angels that's working in the invisible realm. They're talking to people on your behalf. See, the more the wealth power of God is moving, you're going to see how the spirit is touching people's hearts for you. Wealth favor make people start becoming kind to you. And see, a lot of children of God don't understand that an opportunity is a harvest. If somebody gives you a job is a harvest. The opportunity to make more money is a divine thing. Saints, the world, they are faster. The children of this world, they are faster in their obtaining of money than, than, than saints which was never supposed to be. An ungodly woman and a godly man, they, they, they steal laws from the kingdom of heaven and use them, and they, they work witchcraft and walk in satanic robbery of wealth, and that wealth be belonging to the saints. Saints, I, 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 I'm looking at so much stuff as I'm getting older and wisdom, right? I'm seeing how wealth, it can be stolen by a satanic camp that is more aggressive than you. Remember, I gave you that reference that if Jacob doesn't aggressively take his inheritance, it's not going to come to him. Esau going to have it. Even though it belonged to Jacob, Esau going to take it. Even though Jacob is the one that's supposed to have it. 
Because you have to take it by force. God dang. <laughs> you got to take it by force. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. As long as. As long as you procrastinate. You're not going to have it even though it's yours. So the Holy Spirit has to empower you to take a hold of wealth. Because if, if the Holy Spirit doesn't do it, wealth going to pass you by. Wealth is not going to come to you if you don't become intentional about wealth. See, I didn't just step into this type of anointing. I thought deep about it. I heard it. It didn't irritate me. Some people, when they can't obtain, when they think that they can't obtain wealth, because you can't obtain wealth, when they think they can't obtain wealth, then they get discouraged and they don't want to hear about it. Things that are challenges in the spirit, the reason why they are challenges is because you're going to have to humble yourself and die to yourself through listening to instructions for it to manifest. The enemy will make it look too hard and then you, saints, did you know that the Lord told the rich man to sell what he had? That means that he was going to get all the money back for what? So saints, imagine you have a Versace rug. If you take the Versace rug, and you exchange it. The Versace rug, you still going to get the value of the Versace rug back. That's what King Jesus told the man to do. The man was going to take the objects and flip it and get money. And he couldn't even do that. The Lord wasn't telling him to leave money. The Lord was telling him just take the money that the objects are worth. But the man was selling it. He was still going to get money back. That's what selling means. See, the Lord never going to let you be empty handed because he always going to put a seed in your hand for you to change your life. <laughs> See, the Lord always going to put something in your hands. It's going to start small, but it's going to grow in the area of wisdom. As wisdom is growing in you, that sowing going to grow. Sowing don't stay at the same level. If it does, something is wrong. When I started sowing, my sowing went up. I remember being a teenager when I started off at like $37. Then I started sowing hundreds. Then I started sowing 500s. Then I started sowing the 300s, the 700s. Then I started sowing the thousands. But my goal was to get to a thousand. That was my goal. Now I'm not saying sow thousands all the time, but I had started to hit that trademark seed. Because the thousand is a, it's a pioneering seed. Like something going to happen to you that didn't happen to your mama. Your father, something going to happen to you when you saw a thousand dollar seed, you telling the spirit, I want you to do something legendary on my behalf. I want you to bless me in an uncommon way, anoint me in an uncommon way, give me a uniqueness, a significance about what you have called me to do that is different from everybody else. See, nobody could be compared to Solomon in his day. But look what jump started it. When you saw a thousand dollar seed, you're telling the spirit, okay, enough of this small life. I want everything that you have for me. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to be religious. I'm not going to be self-righteous. I, I, I sense a spirit of divination. So I'm going I'm to block this nigga. You, you see how them spirits work? Talk about yes. Amen. They say hallelujah. Yeah. Telepathically, I ain't clicking with you.
I hope some of y'all learned this in your personal life. When people up there sneak into your life acting like they up there on the same accord and they just using the same type of verbiage to look like they on one accord and there's a demon mocking you. Talk about the spirit of divination. That was a spirit of divination right there. Talking about, yes, Lord. Amen. And the demon inside that body up there typing, trying to. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal his wealthy side to you. So that you can have all sufficiency in all things. And you have to become serious about this. You hang around too much religious people. They always want to talk about prayer and, and, and all of that different type of stuff. And, and then you got the same lid on them, lid on you that they have on them. They never accomplished financially. The spirit wants to take you into the portals of wealth and the gates of wealth. Wealth gates have provision and substance that is beyond what you have seen and heard. Wealth gates have abundance that you always dreamed about. Wealth gates is a supply system that is superior to this earth's government, this world's government. Wealth gates. Spirit wealth is overflowing money that's not going to take you to hell because God has authorized you to steward it and enjoy it. Spirit wealth is overflow finances that the father will not deem you a thief because you have it. When it's spirit wealth, that means that the spirit controls it when it gets to you. So the spirit ministers seed to the soil. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says. He ministers seed to the soil. Do you know what that means? God pitting money in your hands to sow is actually God's ministry. That's his office. The Lord of the harvest. But he's also the Lord of the seed. Because you can't be a Lord of a harvest without being the Lord of the seed. He ministered the seed because that's his ministry. So he ministered seed to you so that you can unlock his other realm called harvest. And spirit wealth is in that harvest. So before you get to spirit wealth, you got to operate in spirit sowing. Where you listen to the spirit on how to sow, what to sow. See, as long as sowing is still in your jurisdiction and you still operating and sowing in the natural, that sowing not inf if affected. The, the effective sowing is, is spirit sowing. And that means that the spirit going to talk to you and say, sow this. That means the spirit going to talk to you and say, so that. Because that spirit wealth that's coming into your hands. And see, on your altar, God always answers by fire. That means that his intensity, his passion is revealed through sowing. Your sowing allows you to see the great passion that God has for you manifest. In favor, in deliverance, in blessing. See, on Elijah's altar, where he sold, the fire came down. See, my daughter right here, look what she said. That's how I got my daughter out of a 25-year uh, jail time off of a $1,000 seed. You see her testimony there? And that's real. Because she's been testifying that. Since earlier this year when I when I when I went on YouTube.
See, the wind of the spirit blew in the direction of her daughter because she sold that thousand dollar seed. And she's still sowing. I, I think that her, her latest seed was seven hundred and seventy seven dollars. I see it. I see it. I see it. She's still sowing. That was last year, according to natural. She's still sowing. See, as long as you stay in the sowing position, your life just going to keep on getting better and better and better and better and better. And saints, the seed answers prayers. Whoa, 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 whoa. The seed answers prayers. So when you sowing, you petitioning God with the seed. The sower don't have to keep on laboring in prayer and begging God to do something because the seed answers prayers. The seed petitions God. You asking him a question when you sow. That's why God asked Solomon, what shall I give you? But Solomon was in that thousand flow. See, you may not be conscious of it, but when you sow in a certain way, God start asking you, what shall I give you? When you are a crazy sower, if you get around religious people, they'll mess you up real bad. You know why? Because certain stuff that God is going to reward you with, religious people are going to tell you, no, that's not biblical. And I'm not talking about he going to reward you with no 40 ounce. You're going to get drunk. I'm not, talk I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. But when you're a sower, the Holy Spirit going to allow you to taste and see that the Lord is good. A uh, paradise power start moving in your direction and you start living in eternity right now all through the seed. The seed lets you live in heaven while you're still on earth and you're still in your physical body. Spirit wealth will take your life into all the glories of money coming. Financial favor. And he daily loads you with benefits. See, as you're operating in that anointing of honor, the daily load of benefits start becoming a reality. It's no longer scripture, but now it's a picture. You can see it. 